Okay, greetings, people. Today is what? Wednesday? Thursday. Thursday. Thursday what? The 30th. So June 30th, 2016, and it's about how hot outside? Way too hot. Way too hot. Okay, what is your guess? What would you guess it is? Yeah. That's not hot. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's over 100, but my thing says in paradise for some reason. Um, I don't know why this is connected to paradise as opposed to right here. 98. It's supposed to be 103 today and 81 degrees tonight. So, um, so I kind of go through that because uh, we record these. Huh? I was like, that's what my phone said too, 87. Huh. So we record these, and you know, we've been doing it for about three years. And we have 700 videos in the library. And we do it because people don't take good notes. And if you don't take good notes, what happens? Yeah, you don't remember. And what's even worse than that is you don't have any way to get the information back. So having it recorded, if you ever wanted to go back and look at it, it's there. So why should we care about that? So you wouldn't want to use the documents that are used? Yeah, there could be something of importance. So what is it, Ebony, that you want to do for a career? Physical therapist. Okay, physical therapist. Good, and how far along are you in that process? No, no. So, how far are you in your education? Not enough. High school? Okay, GED? Okay. I'm, I'm not being like sarcastic or anything, but I was diagnosed with breast cancer my senior year of high school. Uh -huh. So, they did not do credit, which, you know, from this and from the beginning, sure. I brought in my doctor's notes. And when I was going through the physical therapy, they didn't have no hair, no eyebrows, right. no nothing. And I'm not coming to school looking all crazy. Yeah, sure. You seen the movie uh, I Am Legend with uh, Will Smith? Wow. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah. well, you saw how other people look. That's how I look. You can see my veins. Um, so I was like, I'm not, you're not going to be like that. I'm not going to school. Sure. So they did not credit. Um, I then was still involved with an ex boyfriend as in this couple. He didn't like me being out in public or like being around other people without him being there. So I got credit for that. So I ended up not being in school. And that just ended in my February. So. so is that a wig? This, no. Wow. wow. So I was, your hair grew I, up I'm quickly. 20. This happened when I was like 18 or 17. Oh, so what ha What just yeah. ended in February? This, um, the relationship, like me oh, and I not to go outside oh, on my weird stuff. Oh, I see. Okay. So okay. now I'm back on track because I'm in this program and stuff. I live with my mom again. Okay. And I'm back on track. I'm getting involved with the work that you do at school. Yeah, I'm doing that now. Good. I'm back on track. So they're going to help me in school and everything else. Because I'm just missing people. Here's some people. Mm -hmm. That's it. And then I'll get my diploma. And it's not too soon. Okay, so what we do here is we focus on three things. One minute. Brain and the future. Those are the three things we talk about. Employment, our brains and the future. Now, do you remember anything from the last time? Two weeks ago, we were talking about the future. Okay, what's what, what do you what's one thing you remember? Drone. Okay, so Ebony, do you know what a drone is? No. You don't you don't know what a drone is? Have you ever heard the term drone? Drone. Drone. Like drown? <laughs> no. Okay, you never heard that term. No. Okay, cool. Had you heard it before last week or two weeks ago? No. Okay. So a drone is one of those things that fly in the sky that might be this big or they could be pretty large. It's an unmanned aircraft. And they became known maybe 10 years ago now. Predator drones do what? They're the ones that you see on TV in the military. So they're the ones that fire bombs, shoot weapons. Okay. Yeah. My mom and my dad were in the military, so I don't know nothing. Okay. But now, you can 
go to the store and you can buy a personal drone and have a camera on it and take pictures or movies of stuff. You know Amazon, right? You know the company Amazon? Okay. So they're testing drones to deliver packages to people. Okay? For what? Instead of FedEx or UPS. So you order a book, a magazine, you know, you order something, and a drone can deliver it to you. What do you think of that? Yeah. And uh, it turns out when these become popular in the next five years, you'll have a choice of paying $10 for FedEx or UPS or post office for next day, right? Or, do you remember how much this was for the drum? Or $3 to have your package delivered in 30 minutes. Yeah, they're testing right now. It'll be very common. So today, you had never heard about drugs. So you'll see those things just flying around? Huh? Will you see them flying around? Yeah, what you're going to see is a line in the sky that's like a highway of drugs. And that thing can mess with us? Well, yeah, you can shoot them down. Oh, wow. But people aren't really going to do that. Are you know? sure? People can shoot these. People can shoot at airplanes and helicopters, <coughs> birds. You know, some people will, but it's not, most people won't. So that's going to be a common thing. And if you can deliver packages in 30 minutes to you know where to, to wherever your smartphone is. So if you're having lunch someplace or you're at work and you want that package delivered to you where you are, based upon your cell phone with its GPS coordinates, because you know that your phone knows where you are, right? Okay, based on that, it'll send you a message and say, where do you want the package delivered? To your house, to you, to work, where you want to go, and it will be delivered. So what happens when anybody can have packages delivered for $3? Everybody can. Yeah, and you can have a lot of new types of businesses. One of the businesses I'm waiting for is a specialty baking company that makes really cool desserts, but you can't get them here because we don't really have any specialty bakeries but like really expensive desserts. Um, but this person will have the, the bakery in their house. They'll get a business license. They'll have a real bakery in their house. They'll advertise on the internet through social media. But if you want to have a really great dessert, it's going to cost you $10, including delivery, and it'll be delivered to your house. What time do you want it? So a lot of little things that people do, drones are going to be able to make it so that anybody can be in business. And it, wouldn't that be cool if you wanted to be a baker and you had your, your uh, kitchen, your commercial kitchen downstairs and you lived upstairs? For some people it would be very cool. They wouldn't have to go to work every day. A lot of baking people like to do early in the morning. So if you just had to go down the stairs, you do it. Now, are you familiar with the game of golf? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a new sport. It's called drone golf. So you have the drone fly with your ball. You have your little controller device. And you have to try to get the ball closest to the hole. And they have some rules. And it's a game of skill. Uh, and it's a good game of exercise. So this is a good game of exercise. Yeah, because you have to walk. And one of the problems for golf is if you get into your 60s, 70s, and 80s, swinging the club is hard on your body. 
companies or yeah, but they also have off brands and stuff like that. Are the same thing. Yeah. 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 I'm just saying. Yeah. So, but what you would do for exercise is you would be walking. Oh, okay. So if you're going to play 18 holes of uh, drum and golf, you might walk five miles. It's not a short thing. So that's one example. How about self-driving cars? That was on Hot Tub Time Machine too. Was it? So they had driving cars like you you type in where you're going or where you need to go. Yeah. And it's kinda like Uber, but yeah. there's no one in the car. So they just it would just drive because So guess drive. who's doing that now? Testing cars that have, have over a million miles. Google. Google has been driving self has been testing self driving cars for many, many years. Okay, hello. Hi. How are you? So Google, and what is your name? Victoria. Okay. So what we're talking about, Victoria, is three things: employment, brain, and the future. And what do you what do you want to do for a living? Medical field. Okay. Like Not what? Not sure exactly yet. Like more surgeon. Like nurse. Like okay. Um, with the PA. Okay. What about a PA? Physician's assistant, sort of like a nurse. Uh, I haven't not really. Seen the book for that. Okay. Now, why do you want to get into that field? I like that person too. <clears throat> okay. So, we talked about three things: employment, brain, the future. So, it turns out, in the medical field, there's a shortage of people in the medical field. So, that might be a job that's going to be around 20 years from now. Are you familiar with drones? You don't know what a drone is? Never heard the word? No. Okay, good. So this is a word that you're gonna now start hearing a lot and seeing a lot. Drones are unmanned flying machines that could be this big, they could be this big, they could be this big, and they typically have cameras in them. And so one of the things they're used for is just videotaping stuff. Another thing they're used for is starting to be used for is delivering packages. <laughs> Another thing that they're used for is building things. So you go on your computer and you say, build this, this wall. And you have these drones that are able to pick up bricks and go out and just put them in a wall. So you have a guy who's a bricklayer who's doing things, but the brick is delivered by a drone. He just puts the drone, down, the brick down right where he is, or puts it down on the wall, or whatever it is, or in other kinds of home construction. And these are going to be the future. And they can see better than we can see. Um, they can hear better than we can hear. And so it'll be very common in the construction business for guys to have drones helping them do their work. You say, you know, go get my hammer, go get my whatever. This little flying device will go get it, come back. Self-driving cars. Are you familiar with that? Okay, so you're familiar with Google, though, right? Yeah. Okay. So Google has been having self-driving cars. And Gianna here, two weeks ago, wanted to be a, a truck driver because she wanted to travel and see the world, right? Or see the country. And so so we talked about The future is self-driving cars. And in Europe, Mercedes and Volvo are doing self-driving big tractor trailers, the kind you see on the freeways. So let's do a little thought thing and say, uh, if you had a car, self-driving car, so it would take you to work every day, and let's say you drove a thousand miles a month how many miles is that a day? What's a thousand divided by thirty? Okay, so let's say three, right? So what's thirty times three? 
3 times 3? 90. 90. and a third miles a day. You drove your car a thousand miles a day. And that's what a typical person does. Well, let's say you drive your car 50 miles a day. How many hours do you think you need your car? What would you say, Victoria? How many hours do you need your car if you're driving 50 miles a day? idea? 50 miles, you don't have any idea how many hours you drive? Okay, let's say your average speed was 25 miles an hour. How many hours is that? Two. 25 times two is 10, right? Okay, so you drive your car, let's say two miles, two hours a day. What is your car doing the rest of the time? Yeah. Unless you have a spouse or a brother or sister that needs to be able to do that. Okay. Let's say you don't. You're right, but let's pretend right now you don't. Because most places you go around, you see cars in parking lots, especially at businesses where people work. They drive to work, they leave their car there. So what if I said to you, Victoria, hey, you're not using your, your, your car, you take your car to work and you leave it in the parking lot. How about if I pay you $300 a month to borrow your car plus I'll pay for gas and maintenance. But I'm gonna give you $300 a month to use your car. What would you say? Are you gonna steal it? Right, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, you get it when you need it. It's when you're not using it, because you're only using it two hours a day. So if I'm saying when you don't need your car, and I'm gonna send you a message, an app, that's gonna say, hey, can we borrow your car in 30 minutes? Because we have these Ladies so that you're live in the. Give me $300 yeah. So we have these, because we have these ladies that live in the nursing home that want to go to church. So we're going to go pick them up. Your car's going to pick them up because it's self driving. It's going to leave your work, go pick them up, take them to church, and then bring them back. Wait a minute. I think they should use 25. 25 lines. Yeah, because that's what I'm thinking. Like, because wouldn't they use it more than like $300? Right. So like, well, because because uh, you got to think about it in an average car too. Like, um, a week, in a week, how much gas do you pay? You know they're paying for right. gas too, oh, okay. and maintenance. Well, then, so yeah. it's a lot. Of, yeah, a lot of people would. Right. Now let's That's say like your Uber, let's say your car payment is three hundred dollars. It's like Uber, but there's no driver. Right. Your car payment is three hundred dollars, and I'm going to give you three hundred dollars. What is your car payment now? How much is your car going to cost you now? Zero. Right? It's going to cost you zero. So what might you do now if your car is going to cost you zero dollars a month? Maybe you decide to say, you know what? I'm going to get a BMW because you're going to pay me 300 So right now, I can keep my Toyota and pay $300 a month. Are you, are you considering your bills and stuff that you have at your house too, or are you just for this car right now? This is just the car right now. So one way is you keep your Toyota, and now you just made an extra 300 a month, right? Because this made your, the money I gave you, my company gave you, paid for your car payment, right? Mm -hmm. You might say, <clears throat> well, my job, I can afford to pay $300 a month for a car, and since you're going to pay me 300 now, I can get a $600 car. Before, I could only have a Toyota because my payment was 300 But now I can have a BMW. Do you think some people might do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people might. I personally would. Huh? I said I personally wouldn't, but. Would you do this one? Yeah. Okay. Now, some people say, my car payment is 300 I don't want to do that. I don't want to let anybody else use my car. 
So they're going to have a Toyota and it's going to cost them 300 The better option is you have your Toyota, you get paid 300 and it costs you nothing. And what should you do with that 300 The 300 that That you were paying, this 300 uh -huh. that you used to pay. So Because now it's not going to cost you anything, right? I will put it up, save. Okay. Sell to our other dealer. Okay. So that's the right thing to do. It's just to put the money in an investment right. in Apple or Google or something like that. Okay. So that's an example of what's going to happen with cars. Um, what else is your car going to do? Break down. No. Oh, wait, you're right. <laughs> why isn't it going to break down? It wouldn't break down. Okay, why oh, not? I forgot that it's a nope. <laughs> self-driving car, right? Yeah. Oh. Why won't it break down? I don't know. I would guess they would just put it in right? Well, I'm saying, yeah, when it's not being used, because now we just took up so like 1 on 4, minus 2 for you, like, no, minus 2 yeah. for me. I'm just saying after every so often, your car do break down. Yeah, that's why it's going to break down. down but like, yeah, okay. something that you it's want. not going to break down. Why not? I don't know. Maybe. Because it's a stress. It's a hybrid. Huh? It's a hybrid? <laughs> no, it's not going to break down because it has a computer in it. And when it that's why I'm saying it's, it's more high technology. It's going to drive itself to the yeah. auto repair place right. before it breaks down. Teslas do that right now. Well, they don't drive, but their computer inside does the diagnostics and says, I need to be serviced. I'm going to drop you off at work. I'm going to go get serviced. Then what I'm going to do is get a car wash, because I deserve to be washed. I'm going to get a car wash. And I'm going to get gas in the car. I'm so basically get the car has a mind of its own. Yeah, it's going to have a computer. That's it's going to be. <laughs> that is very scary. That's the future. That's that's the they're going to take over. Yeah. That's the problem. Okay. So <laughs> that's that is the thing that the, that's happening in the future. It's happening right now. Oh. So the thing you've got to be thinking about. So is that, that do you know that that's going to cause more like problems though? What? What kind of problems? Um, with with the cars being self-driven and self-taking care of. Why? Oh, and robbery. What if somebody robbed it? What, How? How are they going to rob it? They're going to put a gun to its motor and say, <laughs> no, do what I tell you or I'm going to shoot you? No, I was thinking about that too. No, I'm saying because the, uh, you know, they just sound perfect. That's the, why. Yeah, the, and then uh, that's the mechanic. About yeah, it. yeah. yeah. Well, that's perfect. what I'm thinking. There's something that's wrong with it. Something yeah. wrong. But the mechanics, you know, I'm like, they're going to go out of business because I'm like, no, because what if the car breaks down? Because they're going to go Okay, out there's going to be mechanics, but yeah, there's going to be fewer. That's what I'm saying. But what right. there's not going to be, so be is car road. repair yeah. people. That's what I'm like if you get in an accident. Because these cars, okay, so here's how close can you drive to a car in front of you? We did this last time, remember? Mm -hmm. My mom was saying. See how I went there? Yeah. My mom taught me one pregnant lady. Huh? One pregnant lady that's eight months. That's how far you can go from with the car. Because your car is that. One thing I don't know how far is that. Really I, my mom explains everything to me as I was a little kid. But I'm saying, like, you know, like the space between you and the other car, like enough, you're not going to hit the pregnant lady because it's going to be a little bit behind her. But you're also the car in front of her, you know, they're going to be a little bit safer too. Yeah. So it's enough space. Okay. So yeah. what is That's the what my number? Mom explained to me. Okay. So I'll, well, I'll tell you what it is. Something what is it? Oh, four seconds. Okay. Well, it's one car length for every 10 miles of speed. So if you're going 10 miles an hour, that would be one car length. Okay, that's about from here to the wall. Yeah, some people do. Some people do. When we are focused on the car in front of us. What about buses? See, that's where my mind is going. Like there wouldn't be any, right? Okay, so guess what? I didn't bring it. I didn't bring it, but I have an article that was in last week's review journal. And it says in the fall, there's going to be self-driving buses on UNLV. So pretty much everything is going to be self-driving. Because I read this book, and that's what's creepy about it. I read this book, and I was probably like in the eighth grade. And everything was like, 
in the kitchen every single week. You could just say, oh, I want some pancakes. Okay. Your son will make some pancakes. Okay. So, and then it's just, then it's just not just humorous, it's just like, what oh, What year wow. is this? <laughs> this, 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 this Science. There are people. There are people whose jobs are to figure out when that day is going to come. Based upon computers, were very crude 20 years ago. They're getting better, 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 better. When are they going to be able to do everything we can do? And there's there's a year for that. There's then we're not going to have enough for that. What is that year? What would you, you guess? Saw I would say. Uh, no. Did you say so? I'll say 2020. In three years, the computers are going to replace people. You never know what they okay. want. So you say 2020. Victoria says 2020. Because you said you already yeah, have the cards, right? They're, de they're developing a medicine that's like not eternal life, but it keeps you, you like euthanized. Like your body won't break down as easily. Like you know how some people like they develop carpal tunnel or right. like something with their brain or okay. whatever. We like can talk about that in a second. No, but what year are computers going to be able to do anything we can do? Okay, well, let me tell you, I'm going to say 2025. Okay. Yana? 20, 2026? I'll say 16. Okay, so 2031. Okay, so the correct answer is somewhere between 2035. So how old would you it be, be in 20 old. years? I'm not going out. You're 20? I'm going to be 21 tomorrow. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll be, be in our 40s. Right. We'll so write this okay. down. Remember this. <laughs> Leave a note on your smartphone to yourself. Put on your Google Calendar on, the, on your birthday when you're 40. Say, I just went to a workshop, and I was told that by this date, here's what was going to be happening. Right. When you go back, <laughs> well, in 20 years, when you look at it, you're going to say, boy. Well, then, uh, that's why you record it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to But how you're saying all of this right now, right? I'm not no, I'm yeah. speaking on this. Okay, how you have this record. Okay, well, there's the Simpsons. They, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I know it's funny, but, you know, they had Donald Trump that ran for president, and they had the same group of people there in reality. I when Donald that. Trump did his actual was so racist speech or whatever, he was, there was the same people behind him as there was in, in the cartoon, cartoon episode yeah. like 20 years ago. Okay. So what the, see, you know this. Did you predict that? Yeah, you you predict that? You no, I didn't predict that. that. Oh. But there are people who do this, and this is, you can go do... You're just going to have a lot of money, that's all. Head Your point. kids won't have to worry about nothing. Well, it's going to be very scary. No we'll, we'll, we're going to talk about that. So by the year 2035 to 2040, computers are going to be able to do everything we can do better. So what are we going to live on? I'm going to say, so basically they're just getting rid of us. To so me. there's going to be two types of people. I'm just going to say, like that little movie, like I said, I hope I. Oh. There's going to be the people who are going to become superhuman that uh, if their teeth get bad, they're just going to grow new teeth. They're going to grow them in a dish, and then they're going to put them in instead of implants. It's going to be an implant of your tooth. You, have, you, have a, you need an organ transplant. They're going to grow your own liver. So you need a new liver or a heart. Can I record you too or no? Yeah, you can. But, okay. Um, you, so, but I, I'll, this is on YouTube. You can go look at this on YouTube. Oh, really? Well, some people can listen to that. Okay. So, in the future, wealthy people, really, you're kind of not going to get old because they will be able to, um, they'll be able to grow their own organs out of stem cells. Oops. Okay. They'll be able to grow their own organs out of stem cells. Now, what happens to the rest of us? We die. Well, we don't die. We die. <laughs> she said she would die. <laughs> yeah, we, well, we don't die. So what happens to us? We don't have money. Try. So what happens? Okay, so the problem is if, if, if something doesn't happen, what are people going to do? They're not just going to say, okay, we're going to die. Right? They're going to revolt. Gonna, yeah, I was just going to say, or. There's um, going to be a revolution. Or rebel against everything. Okay. But they're not going to let that happen. 
they meaning the people in power. So hey, you've heard of Silicon Valley, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody heard of Silicon Valley? Okay, Silicon Valley is in California near San Francisco, just south of San Francisco. It's where there's a lot of technology companies. Google is there, Apple is there, Facebook is there. That's really the headquarters, uh, one of the world headquarters where all the technology companies go because there's a lot of people that know science and technology and work together to do that. So there's a venture capital company. What's a venture capital company? It's a company that if you have an idea, you say, hey, I have an idea for a new device, but I need money. So venture capital guys say, oh, okay, well, let's look at it. If we like it, we'll give you money. So there's a venture capital company that's doing an experiment right now that says, you know what? Let's just give people a house and money to live on. We don't have to pretend they're looking for a job. We don't need to have a bureaucracy of you need to go down to this place, you need to wait and fill out this paperwork. We're just gonna give you a house and money, or an apartment and money. No strings attached. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna pay for it? The government. Well, the government's gonna send you the check, but where's the money gonna come from? The wealthy people. The wealthy people. Because what are they gonna say to the wealthy people? We're gonna, you're gonna pay a tax. Okay, now how are you gonna feel if the wealthy people are, are having to pay a tax? Nothing. Good, right? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> they, they should. Okay, they got more money than they need. This is fair. I, ha I need money, they have too much money. They pay more taxes like in other countries. But it's, it's the same way too though, because some wealthy people work hard for their stuff too, just as well as the broke people do. Okay, so, so I, here's I what they say to those people. Though, well, so here's what they say to those people. Well, here's what we, they say to the other people. You have more money than you can spend. These people don't have money. If they don't have a place to live and food to eat, they're gonna revol revolt, they're gonna rebel. So wouldn't it be better for you if they didn't rebel because who are they gonna kill? You, because you got more money. Correct, so do you wanna keep your money or do you wanna keep your life? Oh, my life is Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's do well by doing good. So we're gonna tax you, you're making $10 million a year, we're gonna tax you nine million. Now how are you gonna feel that that person who's making $10 million has to pay nine million to help everyone else? Good, right? At least That's still a million dollars. Oh yeah, they're taking most of our money. Okay, okay. They, they, you yeah, still have a million dollars. But they're wealthy so they can make that stuff right back. So, so you're, like, it's no skin so, off their back. So you're, you're still gonna make a million dollars. You can live on a million dollars, 20,000 a week. Could I do an example of what you're saying? So, to be in the, in the test, mm -hmm. we're doing it up in the Bay Area. No, so, I, like, I want to be an example. I'm saying, like, similar to what you're saying, like, my uncle has three stores in Henderson and a big house, and he has a house in the back of his house, a house. Yeah. Not like a little, right. little, a ha why do you have two houses? You know? Does he have a pool? Yes, in okay. his house. Cool. <laughs> so, and outside. Why do you? Look, well, so that's a different story of why they do it. But here's here's the thing. So we're now you have ten million. Now you have one. And a whole bunch of other people have a house, and they get how much do you need a, a month? Fifty million. No, how much do you need a month <laughs> to live? Five. Say five hundred a week. You have a house. The utilities are paid. I'm gonna say two thousand to three thousand a month. Okay, say two thousand a month. Okay, so you have a place to live, right. and you get $2,000 a month to spend however you want. Right. How does that feel? Good. Good. Like Might go to school, school right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you go buy clothes and stuff. So what do they say to the wealthy people? They say, beyond a doubt, you have mine. Yeah. That's what they're going to say. They're going to say. They're gonna get the money back. Because they're not going to save their money. They're going to go shopping, they're going to do that stuff, and they're going to spend it. You're going to get your money back. You own a clothing store, you own a whatever kind of business, you, you make cell phones, guess what? Don't worry, you're going to get the money back. So next year, you're going to make, an, you're going to make $20 million. 
and it works, right? And the reason when it doesn't work is if we gave you $2,000 and you said, well, my husband and kids are in Mexico, I need to send them half. Now, Diana's not gonna get the money back, right? Because right. it's out of the country. That's what everybody's getting. Well, not everybody, but there's a lot of immigrants here. So that's what it's about. Well, you won't get free money if you're an immigrant because it has to circle around. It can't leave the bowl. <laughs> it's like, think of it as like a bowl of soup. You can stir it up and it's okay, but if you start taking soup out of the bowl, pretty soon you don't have any soup left and that doesn't work. But if you're just stirring it around and you have it this month and you have it next month and it's going over here. So that's what's gonna happen in the future. And so what they believe is, the best guess of what's gonna happen when people can't work is we're gonna give them drugs and have them play video games. What? That's the best guess. What are you talking about? Give me an idea. <laughs> <laughs> the best guess. The best guess is Victoria asked the question, what are people going to do in the future if computers are you know, self-driving cars, right. drones? Mm -hmm. I haven't even talked about the hyperloop yet. Right. But self-driving cars and drones, and the cars are driving to the, to the store and picking up groceries and gas station, doing all that. What are people going to do? Well, the best guess We're gonna be fat. is people are going to yeah drive around those little scooters because yeah, they can't walk fat. anywhere. Mm -hmm. And, no, I don't know about that, but they're going to play video games and take drugs. Because I don't know, a lot of people like drugs. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, you, you did make a point. People so, didn't do that. Huh? I said you did make a point. People didn't do drugs just to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and if, isn't, don't people want drugs? Aren't, isn't everybody voting to legalize marijuana? That's what I feel like that's not. I don't feel like it's all the way a drug because it's, you never Let's hear, say it's I not. got in a car accident because I was high. Oh, Correct. I just killed this man because so, I was high like So that. if everybody gets free marijuana, yeah. what's the problem? No problem. Right. Everybody's calm. No one wants to fly here. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. Yeah. So now, is Diana going to be happy or are you going to want to take all of her stuff? You're going to want to break into her house and I'll take her high. stuff? Why do I want to steal? Exactly. So as long as you have... As long as you have food, clothing, and shelter, right? Yeah. And you can play games and you have uh, drugs. You're, and it's you're gonna be okay. too. And, and you're right. I was with a, um, a guy who has his PhD in pharmacology last night. So what's that? It's pharmacology. Pharmacist. Pharmacist. Okay. But he, he, he works for drug companies and he goes to doctors and sells them drugs, sells them drugs. So he really knows what's going on. We were talking about so we're having dinner, we're having drinking wine, we're talking about what's worse, marijuana or alcohol? Alcohol. Yeah, so alcohol's worse. Of course, in every, in every aspect of it, okay. every little. How many accidents it, 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 does alcohol have? Except, he said, if you're going to be, um, at a certain point, you can't drink alcohol because your body can't And so you're physically, your body breaks down because of alcohol. Mm -hmm. But marijuana kills more brain cells. And. Well, we're not going to need brain cells if the robots are doing that. And, things. yeah, so and. <laughs> <laughs> that's correct. I'm not saying like yeah. that, but. <laughs> and, um, so alcohol kills less brain cells, but you can't drink an unlimited amount of alcohol, you'll get sick. Smoke more marijuana. Okay, you can smoke more marijuana, so that means you're going to kill even a lot more brain cells. But Diana's not going to have to worry about rebellion, right? right? You guys are fine. We don't need exactly. We we magic. have what we need, and we can meditate and we can do things. And See, why don't parents think like that? <laughs> <laughs> True. So now, what are people going to do in the future? So in the medical business, what's happening is right now, right now in California, Kaiser Permanente. Have you ever heard of Kaiser? No. Okay, Kaiser. I've heard of Kaiser. I've heard a lot. Okay, this is Kaiser Permanente. 
it is a statewide private medical thing, like the Kaiser Hospitals, Kaiser Doctors, and it was designed after World War II to be a way that uh, working families could get me good medical care. So you go to, you have a Kaiser Doctor, it wouldn't be your regular doctor, you go to like a clinic, which is nicer than a clinic, it'd be a doctor's office, you'd go there and you pay a flat amount every month, and then you had it. And it got really big. And it got so big that people were getting bad service. And if you were a good doctor, you didn't want to work here, so they had a lot of people who weren't good doctors. Well, Kaiser decided, you know, we're going to change that whole thing. We're going to now have, in our doctor's office, in the examining room, we're going to have the same the table stuff, but we're going to have a big screen, high quality TV, and we're going to have a computer, and we're going to have a really good camera in there, and I'm going to have a physician's assistant in there, like a nurse. And you're going to go in there, and you're going to say, well, what's your problem? And the physician's assistant is going to have the camera, and on the TV, what's going to be on the TV? Me, the doctor. Now, but I'm going to be somewhere else. I might be in Sacramento. You're a doctor? No. Oh, boy. <laughs> but in this example, I'm pretending I'm a doctor. So I'm doing the examination of you with my physician's assistant, who takes your blood pressure, takes your blood, does all that stuff. It gets entered in the computer. All of your medical records are on the computer. So you can now get better health care because if you have, say, a sore throat, Who's the doctor? A throat specialist. Okay. If you go to Kaiser or your regular doctor right now, what happens? If you have something the doctor doesn't know how to handle, they send you somewhere else. They send you somewhere else. Or so home. at Kaiser, what they're doing in California now is you make your appointment. Oh, I got a sore throat. Well, guess who your appointment is with? A throat guy. You go to the closest office where you live, but the doctor can be anywhere. Because what? You have the right health care. No, he can be anywhere because of the internet. He's on the he other side of the computer. He's got a camera, a lot better than mine, facing him so you can see him, and he's on a big TV. And there's another TV in there for you to see. So let's say he's examining down your throat. And you might say, well, can I look? And so as the camera's going down there and he's seeing it, you can see what he's going to see. And all of these records are now going to be safe. So if you go back three months later, they can say, hey, did, you know, what, what did it look like three months ago? So a good job to have are these physician's assistants. Let, the pe let people who go to medical school specialize more in things and train a lot of people to be able to do what the doctor says. Check their blood pressure, I need you to take some blood, do this, do this, do this other thing. They like being around people. So that medical in the future is gonna be a place that you can do it, that there will still be jobs because people are going to need to do it. And, you know, it might be 100 years from now that you have an iRobot type of thing, that you won't need a physician's assistant there. But that's not in the near future at all. In the near future, the doctor's going to be somewhere else. You're going to be examined by a specialist. You're going to feel better because you're not going to have to waste time, right, when you get referred out. Usually have to drive somewhere, make an appointment, wait. Things can get worse, and then of course everybody will have bees, right? What's this? I got a little. What is this? A heart thing. I don't know. Not a watch. No, it's not a watch. A heart thing. Sort of. I decided to save fifty cents, and I didn't get any. For fifty cents more, I could have had every option, <laughs> but. Uh, so this just keeps track of how far I walk a day. And it has a little alarm on it. There are other ones that have little lights on the inside, and they're always checking your pulse. And they can 
check your blood pressure. Is there any liquid? No. Nope. Why do you have those on there? Well, we can vibrate. Oh. Okay, or they have lights. That has lights? Yeah. So it has little lights and you can vibrate and stuff. But in the future, everybody will have one of these. It might be on their bib or you know, wherever. Around their neck. And if you have a medical problem, what's gonna ha what's it gonna do? Well, it might vibrate. It's gonna record what's going on. And it'll have the ability through the internet to send it to your physician. And you could get a call that says, you know what, uh, Victoria, um, something's not right. You know, you're dehydrated. You've been off the sun too much. You need to get, you need to start drinking fluids right now. In the future, let's take that an example. Any of you guys like hiking? Yeah. Not really into hiking. Yeah, I'm still working. Okay. So let's say you want to go out hiking in the mm -hmm. future. You know, some people get lost, right? They do. They fall, they get hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the future, when you go hiking, you're going to have stuff you normally have, but you're going to have one of these that's keeping track of how you're doing physically. Are you getting dehydrated? Are you getting too tired? Um, you know what, what's happening to you? The other thing you're going to have is a little tiny drone that's flying above you, around you, that's making sure there's no dangerous stuff. And if you did fall, slip and fall, and got, get hurt, what can your drone do? Huh? <laughs> it will. It will. It won't have to go get help. It'll just make a phone call. But why don't they put stuff in the drone for us? Like what? I don't know. We fall. I need a band aid. Okay. Can you, you can decide yeah. you want to have a big drone. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm talking about just a little tiny drone like this. Oh, no. That looks like a hummingbird. I need one that's like a backpack. Okay, so that would be another thing that you could have. Would you pay for it? Or? Yeah, you would if you wanted it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's all of the stuff people are working on now. One of the guys that is the founder of Google, I just read it, has been, for the last five years, has spent about $50 million developing a flying car. Why? Wouldn't you like to have a flying car? No, not really. Why not? The problem is hard. I don't want to be in it. Okay. So a, <laughs> Some a lot of people don't. Right. You know, but you have to be like, yeah, I would love to have a flying car, but how are you going to drive? How are they going to drive? You know, like. So a lot of people say, yeah, I'd love to have a flying car. I get to work a lot faster. Yeah. I don't have to worry about somebody smashing into me because there's danger or something. I'll just fly 200 feet above the ground or whatever. It's just a flying car, not a plane. And um, okay, so let's talk about one one last thing: hyperloop. Okay, what's that? Do you remember? Okay, the hyperloop is the next generation of train. It will go 700 to 1,000 miles an hour. Oh, Well, you're going to be in a vacuum tube. Okay, so it's right. going to take like 15 minutes to get to LA. You can commute from San Francisco to here in less than an hour. So if you want to work in San Francisco, you could live here work in San Francisco or Montana. So the way this thing works is because it's in a tube, there's no wind resistance. So think of it like this. You're in your car, you roll down the window, you stick your hand outside, you're going down the freeway at 70 miles an hour, you put your hand outside, what does it feel like? A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure, right? You take your hand back inside of the car and what do you feel on your hand? Any pressure? Oh, no. You don't feel any pressure on your hand when it's inside the car. So imagine you have a train inside of a tube, so it's like inside of your car. That means it's going to use a lot less energy. So the same amount of energy that it takes to push against all of this wind, the air, you're, you're going to use to go faster. 
and it's going to be on magnets, so it's going to not have wheels. It's going to be, you know, how magnets can either attract or repel, right? So it's going to have magnets. It's going to be battery operated, have magnets, so that you turn it on. The magnets are going to reverse polarity, and it's going to go bing, and it's going to be floating. And then it's going to go. They tested this in Las Vegas about a month ago. Just a little test run. And it went from zero to 116 miles per hour in 1.1 seconds. So here's what will happen. Why it's going to be very cheap to do this is it's going to wipe out airplanes. Half the distance that you're going to go someplace, you're going to be accelerating, going faster, 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 faster. Then, when you get halfway there, it's going to slow down. You go slower, 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 slower. What happens when it slows down? What's going? What in physics? What's happening? Is it slowing down? Okay, well, it's going to be generating energy to slow it down. That energy is going to be converted into and stored inside of the batteries. So it's going to recharge itself. So it's going to cost almost nothing to take a train track. It's just what was the cost to build these train tracks? It might be $10 million, $10 million a mile. But life is going to get very good because people now can move out of the cities and go live in other places that are really nice. You know, some people might say, I'd love to live on the edge of the Grand Canyon. That's some people. Some people might say, oh, I want to live on the coast in California, or I want to live up in the mountains. And if you're the last 30 minutes, if the train takes you to the last 30 minutes, who cares? Now, here's the other interesting part about this. Imagine that you're inside of the Hyperloop or your self-driving car, and you're looking out. What is it going to look like? OK. Could. What else is it going to look like? It'll look real fast. Mm -hmm. You can't see this. It's going to be small real fast. OK. But it's not. It's not going to look like that. <laughs> Why? Yeah, they're not going to have windows. It's going to be all TV screens, 360 degrees around. So you can decide. You can decide that you want to be flying in outer space, and it's going to look like Star Trek. No matter which way you look, it's going to look like that. Or you might say, I want to be under the ocean. Or you might say, you might say, okay, you could have chicken food flying around you. Or you could say, hey, let's push the button, let's watch the program where we're in the in the middle of the wild, wild west and we're being chased by Indians. We're in a stagecoach and we're being chased by Indians. And we might not get away. And they're gonna attack us. Or, you know, we're in Europe. We're going down this mountain that has all snow, like a sleigh ride. And you're not really going to know the difference. You're not going to be looking outside. Or you could be in a classroom and decide, well, I've got a test today. I want to, I've got a physics test today. Uh, that's what I want to do. Or you're in a nightclub or you're whatever. So there's going to be a lot of jobs for people to do entertainment. It could be actors or programming, filming, making these 360 degree movies. So when the Hyperloop comes out, everything is going to change because now it's going to be very easy for people to travel long distances quickly. So what's the furthest place you've been? Oregon. Okay. And you've been to Oregon. How about you, Jordan? But the furthest place I've been to is Michigan. Okay. Michigan. Where are you from? Are you from here? No. Where are you from? Okay. What part? Milwaukee. Milwaukee. 
know what? Bank card. Mm -hmm. How when did you leave there? Freshman. Freshman. So you know Marquette University? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, did you travel a lot when you grew up in Milwaukee? No. Okay. So, with the Hyperloop, people are going to travel a lot. Why? Because it's going to be fast, it's mm -hmm. easy, and cheap. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, how big about the luggage? They have compartments for that. Oh, okay. Well, I'm like, you know, like, that's like, like send it yeah. after, send it email, send it. Yeah, right. Like, send it later. Do you just send it? Yeah. No. But, packages and you'll see a lot fewer big trucks on the freeways because there will be trains that are just delivering stuff and how fast does a truck go on the freeway maybe 70 miles an hour versus 700 miles an hour so they're, they're, it's going to be like this okay well you want your furniture delivered from milwaukee to here Okay, so here's your choice. You can put it on a truck, and they're gonna drive it out, and it's gonna take two days, and it's gonna cost you $3,000. Or, for $300, you can have it in three hours. <laughs> okay, that's how it's gonna be. Why? What's the difference? What makes the difference? Why is one so much more expensive? Why is this FedEx $10 versus $3 per by drone? Because we have to drive. Because we there's labor, there's people. And, 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 eat and, all that. and they want to eat, yeah. right. right? And you have to have a truck that's designed for people to be able to sit in and sleep in and do stuff like that. The Hyperloop just has a big con con container, just a compartment that they put all your packages in. So you don't have people, and that's the thing that costs money is people. So I was at a opening of a restaurant in the Excalibur. Any of you been to the Excalibur? Yeah, I worked there. Okay. So in the food court, you know where the McDonald's is? Okay. I, was, um, I did miss that because the pimping because we were right. underground. We okay. weren't like around there, so that, you know, we didn't go down with like trash and stuff like that. Oh, I see. The restaurant, I see that. So this guy has a restaurant in the food court where it used to be McDonald's. And he showed me his new kitchen equipment. So you know what a waffle iron looks like, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's like a waffle iron except it doesn't have that waffle. Right. It's smooth. So the new way that, I mean the machines cost a lot more. It might cost $20,000 more than a regular hamburger griddle but you have the patty, the ball, or whatever the shape is. You put it on the griddle, and then you push a button and the top comes down. And it slaps, and it has a thermometer in there. So if you set it for 155 degrees, when it's at temperature, the top opens up. And the server just has to scoop it up and put it on the bun. How do they do it now in the fast food? You have a guy who's the hamburger guy. Have you ever known the five guy? Mm -hmm. Okay, what do they do in five guy? The you guy that's there, he puts it on the thing, then he flips it over. Yeah. And how does he know the temperature? He just does, because he's practiced doing that. But they really aren't that accurate. So with this one, you do it. You just put the, make your meat, put it down on there. And this thing can make 48 hamburgers at one time. Okay. 48 at a time. All come out the right exact temperature. Let's say you say, well, I want a cheeseburger. Okay, so here's what happens on the cheeseburger. About two thirds of the way through, the top opens up. You put the piece of cheese on it. The top comes down, but it doesn't go all the way down and touch. Just enough to melt the cheese. Just enough to melt the cheese. And then when it's done, whoosh, kick it out. Mm -hmm. The french fry machine there 
automatically is always cleaning the oil. It's always filtering the oil. So that means it lasts longer and the food what? Tastes better. Tastes better. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's the biggest problem you have opening restaurants, Frank? Because he owns 50 restaurants. What's the biggest problem you have opening restaurants? He said, people. And that morning, it was the third day that they did been open. That morning, the first thing that happened was they had run out of tater tots. It was just like McDonald's. It was for breakfast and lunch. They ran out of tater tots because EDC was in town. Mm. Said, so we're giving people French fries. Well, it's not really the same, right? French fries is not the same as hash browns. Then as we're standing there talking about stuff, new guy behind the counter says, oh, uh, how do I give somebody a refund because we ran out of eggs? That's kind of bad, right? Yeah, you don't say that all that. Right. Well, but the bad part is running out of eggs right, at a place for breakfast. Right. And so we were talking to him. I said, what's the biggest challenge you have? He said, it's the people, not the machine making the hamburgers. It's the people mistakes, like somebody forgot to order more tater tots. Somebody didn't order enough eggs. And then we order our food. He says, what do you want? I said, oh, whatever you want. I'll have whatever you want. He said, okay, good. We'll have cheeseburgers. I said, great. He said, oh, do you want onions on? I said, no, thanks. He said, yeah, me neither. So there are three of us. So two people ordered cheeseburger, no onions. One person said, I do want onions. Guess what happened? All three hamburgers had onions on them. So it was bad because now that meant the person that you told uh, three cheeseburgers, two with no onions, one with onions, they got the order wrong. So at this point, I said, Frank, do you ever foresee the day when there will be no people? in these fast food restaurants. And what do you think he said? Yeah. What do you think he said? He said, McDonald's is working on that right now. What? Right, McDonald's with no people. Mm -hmm. It's automated. Now, are you going to like that? Yeah, because I don't have to worry about you getting my order wrong because you didn't hear me or because you have an attitude and say, Mr. Busy, say something. Right. And you know what? And it, you're right. It turns out when you go to a fast food restaurant, if the person at the counter, if you have a bad experience at the counter with the cashier, mm -hmm. the rest of your meal suffers because yeah. it's bothering you. Mm -hmm. If you go to a good restaurant and you don't like something, you call the waiter over, what are they going to do? Change it or help you. So what do I need to do to make you happy? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll replace it. I'll do this. But it turns out when you go to a fast food restaurant, you're just hungry, you want to get some food. Okay? You don't care about having conversations with people. <laughs> you just want food. So, in the future, when you're going to go to a, say, McDonald's, you'll just say, uh, okay, Google, I want to go to McDonald's for lunch, and here's what I want. Or maybe the menu will pop up. You pick what you want. What time, you know, say, what time are you going to be there? Well, where's the closest McDonald's? Oh, I can give you that answer. It's, you know, two minutes away. All right, good. That's where I want to get it. Would you like me to place your order? Sure. So I just now place my order at McDonald's. That's what I used to do. Huh? That's what I used to do. Why? That's productive. That is. I don't want to waste time. <laughs> I don't want to waste time having to get out of my car. Well, then, go walk that is a delay. Then you gotta order huh? pizza or something. Huh? I can bring it to you. You go around to the drive up. Yeah. It already knows where you are because you have the GPS in this thing. And it says, oh, okay, Victoria's order just came off the grill. Boom. Because it knows when you're coming. Oh, well, that's good too. Okay, so you're. Your food doesn't get made until the amount of time till just before you get there, like within a minute of you pulling in. 
is when your order is done. Some people realize that I get the It is still lazy to me. Well, do you like milk? Okay, do you like milking cows? No. Is it yeah. lazy to go to the store and buy a thing of milk? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it? It is. Okay, I think it's convenient. Cows, some dry foods are lazy to play. Well, they are, but what if you have to, what if, what if you need to get someplace yeah, so for some and you don't have time? Different. Right. Okay. Different Starbucks is doing this right now too. That you can pre-order <laughs> your stuff and when you get there, it's there. That is the direction it's going. Okay. That's the direction it's going. They, they should have a button, an app, you know? Yeah. Like it's lazy, yeah, but like an app in your phone, you press like, so do you have this app on your phone, the Starbucks app? Yeah, I have the Starbucks app, I have the Zaddy's app, I have the Burger King one. Okay. okay. And the Burger King had specials on it. Yeah, right? like every time you say I want a cracker, right? But I have to get a burger in order to get half off or something. Right. If I have the app, I don't get the cracker at all. I have to do something about it. Okay. But they have to show me what you know. I know. Right. Have I haven't said I used to have it. I don't have the burger anymore. But <laughs> in the future, <laughs> that's how it's going to be. Yeah. Let's say again, you have a self-driving car. Is it going to be lazy to say, you know what? I'm going to stay at work. I'm going to send my car to go to the Burger King. Huh? That's expensive and it's What do you mean expensive? Because like, people lot. already do it. They say, hey, let's go get lunch. Yeah, but it's so I'll drive. Huh? Everybody going to have so many people in the world. You got to think everybody got a self-driving car. Everybody's going to go find McDonald's to get a burger. Everybody's going to do it. That's the answer. Well, but, yeah. But so you don't have to wait for nothing. More but people will do it. Like, like nobody's really living. That's what I'm thinking. No, you get to live because you don't have to do, do menial, time-wasting things. So like for me, I consider having to go get my car filled up a waste of time. I say, I could, there's something better I could be doing than going to the gas station and filling up my car. But see, like I was saying with the book and the stove that mm -hmm. y'all can't get free. I want to cook my own food. I don't want nobody else to cook my food. That's yeah. lazy and what if it better. does it better? Now, 150 years ago, people said the same thing about electric stoves versus the kind you put oh, a piece of wood in. That's gas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think they were like 150 years ago? What's the electric one then? It just it has a coil that turns red. Oh, okay. yeah. I have, oh, that's fair. Okay. Oh, my mom has one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, now, so do you think 150 years ago, Granny, who was used to <laughs> a stove where you put the pieces of wood in there and you have to light them, yeah. said, oh, you're being lazy. You want an electric stove. Yes. My grandma goes, why are you You should go out and cut the wood. That was going to my you gotta go, but then you gotta chop the wood down, yeah. right? Yeah. Then you yeah. gotta chop it, and stack it. so it can fit under okay. there. And then stack then it. you gotta make sure you don't burn the food. So those away, people like, said, <laughs> those people said, oh, anybody who wants an electric stove, they're lazy. I'm right just now, we're not necessarily. Now we're lazy still is. cooking. Yeah, we still have to stand there. We still have to stand there. Do you it's really think it's not the same it's turning really the thing on like versus coffee. having to light it? Yeah, it's more wood. Well, okay, yeah. It's right. a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, it's a lot more. So you get work. But then you're not necessarily um, lazy, though. How about the people who, before they were electric washing machines, Ooh. you had to wash your clothes by hand. And the, I feel sorry that they're probably looking, you know. Yeah. Okay. So are you going to say it's lazy if you have to have your robot take your clothes out of your hamper and put them in the no, washing No, because I hate washing clothes. Oh, okay. So then it's okay. <laughs> it's certain stuff, yeah. <laughs> okay. like, so uh, if you like that. So what you like that? Turn on you like a smile. Right. No, because they have to wash your clothes. Oh, it's too much. I go by. Okay. 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 Ok
Because three like laws of robot, robotics. Oh yeah, these things were fast. Yeah. Like so. <laughs> you saw that movie too. What? I robot. Yeah. He saw he it. He looked. He just looked at my That is the future. Not really necessarily with robots like they that. They made shows about everything that they're coming out with. I was just going to say that's that. Like, it's really like attention like stuff is that they're they making have movies stuff and shows like, like the, uh, it's going to really happen. And it's not called the zombie virus. It's like other stuff that they come out with. You know, there's like, like when the people Ebola. eating ba bath soap, though. And, that was and then in Africa, the boy in Ebola, he, um, right. he had Ebola. He laid there for five days and got up and went to go get got up. Like, he was dead for five days, and he got and he just on the news and everything. everything. No. And then you <laughs> said it. it was on the news. That was never no saying, cold, though. Like purple and no, everything was saying. Not dead. But now we go out. They put him in a cube and brought him back for like four days. He got up and everything. What is that about? Is it for us still alive? Yeah. Right. They just contained it. Yeah, it's just contained for now. For now. Oh. You think they'll find a cure for no. Yeah. There's a cure for cancer no. in Africa, though. I don't think so. They're going to lose money. What about AIDS? They're just well, that too. They're just what do you mean they're going to lose money? Because how much money do they I feel like they're yeah. making more money. money. That's more on Medicaid. That's more off. Get people to lose um, so what's it called? Chemo, chemo and going through all the treatment. They're getting more money doing that kind of treatment instead of getting on Medicaid. That's one of the actual treatment. I feel like they're getting more money. Well, it's true. Some people are making a lot of money off of chemo. But other people said, I'm going to make even more money by creating bacteria that eats cancer cells. But then you got to get rid of that bacteria. Well, we already do. Mm -hmm. I would love to see the day of cancer having a, a cure, but I don't think so. They do. It's not good. So yeah. one of the... They, they have it, but I don't think they're... They're not going to give it to us. No, not at all. Because I just no, really feel like they, they don't want to lose any Like how you just said, chemotherapy not. is um, expensive. It costs, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather make you go through chemotherapy than get Right, that's what I was just saying. They yeah. don't rather keep all that money no. through chemotherapy. Yeah, but wait a second. Nice. Wait a second. Wait, wait. So you're right. The guys who have the chemo treatment, mm -hmm. why should they change? Because they want yeah, they shouldn't change. They shouldn't change, but everybody's okay. dying. But now there's this right. new company. It's not even really working. There's a new company <laughs> that says, we don't do chemo. We do bacteria. Mm -hmm. Where is that? That's the new, that's the new shit. That's the new that there's people doing it right now. Oh, oh. We have <laughs> bacteria. <laughs> so here's an interesting thing. How many cells do you have in your body? Too many to count. No. Yeah, we don't. The red and the white. Those are blood cells. But how many oh, cells? Right. <laughs> how many cells do we have in our body? I don't know. About a hundred. Trillion. A zillion. <laughs> that many. Exactly. About. A Google. No, that's a hundred. Well, a one with a hundred zeros. So a trillion. Hundred trillion. trillion. About 100 trillion cells in your body. <clears throat> now, how many of those cells do you think know who you are? None. Correct. How many do you think care who you are? None. Right. Okay, so we're going to get back to that in a second. So just take that, put it over here. Okay. 100 trillion cells in your body. About. That means approximately. Now, how many little bacteria, how many bacteria are on you? There's a lot, because little kids touch me all the time. Okay, how many bacteria on you, around you, in you? I think you have a lot of bacteria. You have a lot like of Like a million? Yeah. Because a billion? A trillion. Many. A trillion? The Google. Okay, so you have about 10 times more bacteria than you do cells. So how do cells? Then that's why everybody's always sick. No, because most bacteria is helpful. And you got a million and, of that bacteria. Yeah. Um, about three pounds of our body weight is just bacteria. So the bacteria on our skin doesn't weigh a lot, but in our guts. That's mostly bacteria. And what does it do? Bacteria? Yeah. 
in your in your stomach, in your gut. It yeah. it breaks down your food. Yeah. It digests. It eats your food and turns it into something else, into energy. And here's the thing that we're finding out. This is all factual. You can go to TED.com. Um, and you can look it up. No. Okay. You can go to TED.com and look it up. But what they found out is that bacteria communicates with itself. Yeah, they have a language. They, in fact, they have three languages. It has three languages. Yeah, because there's a lot of different types of bacteria. So they have a language that all bacteria can communicate with one another. And then depending upon what kind of bacteria you are, there's other languages. And so they do what's called quorum sensing. And once they agree, okay, well, there's enough of this, we're going to now do something. So for example, if you eat some food that's tainted, meaning it has bad bacteria on it, what happens in your body? That bacteria reproduces itself. It divides, and then you have, so you start with one, and that divides and grows, and then it, it just keeps doing that. So bacteria grow, you take in food, they grow and then they split, and they become more and more and more. Well, when you have a bad bacteria in you that's harmful, it doesn't attack you immediately. It waits until there's enough bacteria, and then it says, let's attack them. So like if you go to Mexico and you drink the water in Mexico, what happens? You get sick. Why? Because there's bacteria that we... But you have to boil the water for it to be tasteful. So, because there's bacteria. But it's not like you take a sip and all of a sudden you're sick. It takes like two seconds and like you get Well, it, it takes the amount of time for, real, for this bacteria. Well, it depends how much you drank. If you drank a gallon of bad water, Okay, you're going to get sick a lot faster than if you have a teaspoon. Okay, so what happens is you take in this bad bacteria, your body tries to attack it, and it tries to survive. Once it gets enough, it says attack, because this quorum sensing it says attack, and that's how you end up getting sick. The person, the, the person. So you drink some bad water. You just had a sip, you don't feel bad, you don't throw up. So no, it's kind of tasty for you. But what's happening in your body, that bacteria is growing. It's reproducing. So there's more of them, more of them, more of them, more of them, more of them. You feel fine, then all of a second, the bacteria communicate with one another and they say, okay, attack. And then they all attack, and then you get sick. That's kind of interesting, right? Okay. Why are you told don't eat food fast? You get hiccups. Okay. Let's see. I didn't ask the right question. So the question. The question is. The people. Why do people say slow down when when you're eating fast? Oh, the Coke. Okay. What else? So you. Okay, well, here's another thing is if you eat, fa if you're hungry and you eat fast, you eat more food. Right. You eat more. And what people thought was, well, if you eat fast, you get full fast. No, they thought, well, if you eat fast, you're going to be packing food and uh, you're going to eat more than if you eat slowly. And then somebody said, well, why? Why is it that when we eat fast, we eat more? Why is it when we eat fast, we eat more? So it turns out that what it looks like is what's happening is the bacteria in your stomach communicate with your brain because our brain has to say, I've had enough. There's enough food in here. When you eat fast, the bacteria haven't grown fast enough not enough of them 
the signal to say stop. So it's not, so what's telling us to stop eating food, oh, I'm full, right? So the bear says, oh, I can't eat another bite, I'm full. That's because it turns out that's probably because the bacteria in our stomach is saying to our brain, I'm full. We have enough food, stop. So bacteria. So there are scientists whose job is to say, well, if these bacteria communicate with one another, if they have language, and they do quorum sensing, maybe we can program them or train them to do things like kill cancer cells. We put food in our stomach, they eat that food. If, because it's in our stomach, they're in the stomach. If we have, uh, if we train them to eat tumors, maybe we just give them a shot shot where your tumor is, and the bacteria eat it. And that is called the law of um, survival, survival of the fittest. So you're a company that used to, that does chemo, well, guess what? You're not going to be around for very much longer because these guys do bacteria, it's cheaper and it's safer. If you have cancer, are you going to want to do the more expensive? chemo or the better, faster, cheaper bacteria? Probably the better, faster. So it doesn't matter what the chemo guys say. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to go out of business. We're not going to charge less. Rent. They don't have to because somebody's going to come along that's going to do it different. Now, how do we know this is true? Here's an important thing to know. Um, it's cold. So, our <laughs> brains have 80 billion cells called what? Neurons. 80 billion cells in our brain. No other life form has anywhere near as many neurons. Okay. Shalom. Knock over the cord. Thanks. Yeah, good luck. Okay, so we have these neurons in our brain. What do neurons look like? They look like trees. They look like the trees outside. They have long branches. And what happens is where these branches touch other branches, those are called synapses. And when we have memories, it's because they're stored in the pattern of these synapses firing. Okay? So where do you where do you have your memories? Well, they're in your brain, right? They're not in your wrist. Because if people cut off your hand, you still have the same memories. But if they take out part of your brain that has to do with certain memories, those memories are gone. So they know all of the memories that we have are stored in our brain. And then we look at our brain under these microscopes and they say, well, what is our brain made of? And it's made of neurons, these particular type of cells that look like trees. And 16 billion of them, about 16 billion of them, about 16 billion of them are in a part of our brain called the cerebral cortex, which is the outer part of the brain that looks wrinkled. So the inside of the brain isn't all wrinkled. That's just the layer on the top. And it appears that's where our memories are stored other places. That's where our memories are stored. When we compare our brains with the brains of all other organs, like birds, lizards, squirrels, <laughs> chimpanzees, rats, when we compare our brains, our brains are different than rodent brains. 
that our brains are the same as primate brains. So our brain is like a chimpanzee's brain, except it's larger. It has more neurons. It's like a dolphin brain. It's like an elephant brain, except it has more neurons. That's it. You open up our brain and you open up their brain. We don't have things in our brain that they don't have. We just have more neurons. Okay, with me so far? Now it turns out that if you have 16 billion neurons, you're able to imagine things. Like what? Money. Okay, so what does money mean to us? If we go in the store and we have a dollar, we want to buy a banana, and we walk in the store and they're selling bananas for a dollar, we can give them this green piece of paper, right? And they'll give us a banana. Why? Because how much cost? Well, no, because they believe that little green piece of paper can be used to buy things. Let's say you go into a place where there's a chimpanzee and he has a banana and you say, I want to give you this green piece of paper, and you give me the banana. You're going to make a trade. Okay. What's it going to do? It's going to take the green piece of paper and do what? Look, probably eat it. Taste it, smell it, rub it on itself. It's going to say no, because I know that this banana is what? Food, right? And this is just a little piece of paper. But for us, we have so many neurons in our brain, we can create a story that says that little green piece of paper actually has value. But will it, does it have any value to a, a chimpanzee? Okay. Now what if we say to the chimpanzee, look, I don't have anything to trade you for your banana, but if you give me that chimpan if you give me that banana, when you die, you're gonna go to chimpanzee heaven. Is that chimpanzee gonna believe you? No, he's gonna disappear. Right. Why? Because that story, he, he doesn't have enough neurons to understand the story that there is this chimpanzee heaven. Let's say you say to the chimpanzee, I'm hungry and there's a law that says if I'm hungry, you have to give me the banana or you'll go to jail. <laughs> okay. He's not going to get the banana because he can't um, understand that thing about laws. What if you said there's human rights? Okay. So they only live in a world that's called objective reality. Okay. So objective means everybody agrees it's the same thing. If I say, you know, what color is this? You say green. If I say, what is this made of? You say wood. <clears throat> what is that thing called? A wall. What's that? A window. What's that thing up in the sky that's really bright and then burns us if you look into it? The sun, okay? That's objective reality. We all agree. Animals, <clears throat> water is water to an animal. Bananas are bananas. That's objective reality. That's where people agree. Yeah, that's what it is. We, though, have so many neurons that we're able to invent stories and get everybody to believe them. And that's called subjective reality. Okay, so if you're a Democrat, that's a subjective story that you believe versus Democrats are good, Republicans are bad, or vice versa. Those are stories we believe. Human rights. Okay, if you cut open a body, do you find any human rights in there? No. Right. There's, there, there is nothing like that. If you cut open our brain, is there, or our bodies anywhere, is there a little organ that could be, well, that's the transmitter receiver so we can communicate with the invisible man in the sky? No. No. So we have so many neurons, we're able to believe in stories collectively. The United States is good, the Muslims is bad, you know, whatever stories are, if they're not objective reality, they're subjective. So we have this wonderful brain that's able to do this stuff, and all of these things are stored in neurons in our brain. And they have guys mapping these neurons. Scientists map them. And that's kind of cool. But one of the bad parts about the brains 
is we are able to take in so much information. Our brain is designed to not remember almost everything we learn. In fact, it turns out about 70% of what we learn today, we will forget if we do not review it within 30, within 24 hours. because we take on so much information. Our brains, remember up here I said, how many of these neurons know who you are? And you said what? None. None. And I said, how many care who you are? None. Okay. So when you learn something, do you think your brain cares that it's important? It doesn't know that it's important unless you tell it it's important. And one way that it knows that it's important to you is not that you say, okay, brain, this is important. That does help but if you do it over and over and over again. So it's like driving a car, right? Oh, Remember the first time you drive drive. drove a car? Scary. Right now, you can drive a car talking to somebody, listening to the radio, chewing gum, texting, and eating a hamburger all at the same time, right? Yeah, that's what we can do because our brain learned that that was important to remember. And now you don't even have to remember how to do things. Like when you brush your teeth in this morning, do you have to, every morning, do you have to think in terms of, okay, hmm, brushing my teeth, how do I do that? Do you have to think it through? No, no. what are you thinking of when you're brushing your teeth? What I'm doing. Exactly. Your brain is doing, these neurons in your brain are doing the tooth brushing part. So, but if we don't do it every day, like brush our teeth every day, our brain says, well, that wasn't important, I'm gonna get rid of it. So what do you think is the difference between good students and not good students? The good students study, the not good students don't study. Okay, so you're on the right track. So it's really the good students remember more than not good students. And why do they remember more? Because they study. So they like to come home and study. They have a, a thing that says, here's these 10 math questions. People who are good students remember more because they either really learn those 10 things and really figure it out, or they say, I'm gonna do 15, I'm gonna do 20. What do we do? I know what I did. I said, okay, how fast can I get done with these? Because I wanna go outside and play. That's what the normal person does. And so we don't remember as much. So when we get to have an exam, we see these questions and we don't remember either how to do it or we don't remember what the answer was. And it's just because we don't remember. So the difference between good students and not good students is good students remember more. So if we're gonna forget 70% of what we learned today, unless we review it, how do we review stuff? Okay, so one way is taking notes. Or if you watch the video, that's how you record. So, but let's say I wasn't recording, oh. and you're not taking notes, you what's gonna happen? Miss. You fail to hear. You're gonna forget 70% unless you review it. But here's the thing with our brains. Our brains don't really know. See, our brains don't have eyes. Our eyes are separate from our brain. Our eyes send signals to our brain we can send messages to our brain, other parts of our brain can send messages to our brain. So our brain doesn't know that I saw that versus I imagined that I saw it. Okay, so can you imagine your mother in a blue dress? Right now? Yeah, can you imagine that? Yeah. Can you imagine that? No. You can't imagine your mother in a blue dress, why not? She doesn't wear those. But you can't picture, you can't create an image of your mother? You can. You yes. can think of your mother wearing a yes, blue dress. I can. Okay, but have you ever seen your mother wearing a blue dress? No, because you said she doesn't. Sleep or something, you know. Okay, but no, you said she doesn't wear a blue dress, mm -hmm. right? But you pictured it. Right. Your brain, on the brain level, doesn't know the difference between you imagined it, or you remembered it, or you're seeing it. You said your brain doesn't. Does not know the difference between it's something you well, just imagine, 
you remember it because you saw it before. Oh, okay. Or you're looking at it right now. As far as your brain is concerned, is there's your mother in a blue dress. Yeah, I was like, your grandma knows. Okay. Yeah. Now, can you picture your mother wearing a blue dress on the back of a motorcycle? Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen your mother in a blue dress in the back of a motorcycle? No, I've seen her in a motorcycle, but it's not the dress. Okay, so it turns out our brain is very good at being able to imagine things because it's subjective reality of these neurons. Yes. So if you don't take notes, how do you review? Yeah. You do it in your mind. You just say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and rewind what I saw, and as far as your brain is concerned, that's the same thing as if you're reading it off a piece of paper. Doctor of Pharmacology. Doctor of Pharmacology. So, ology is the study of. So, he's a doctor in the study of medication. Okay, so we're almost out of time. We've got 12 minutes. So, here's the important thing the most important thing about the brain. We have all of these neurons, nothing else is as many neurons. Brain is a very special thing. All of our memories and all of our stuff are stored in our neurons. Somehow they don't know exactly how right now, but one day they'll figure it out. About 70% of what we learn, we're going to forget within 24 hours. For some people, they can remember more because they practice. Other people don't practice remembering, they're not good at it at all. But just figure 70% of what we learn. But if you don't take notes and there's not a video you can watch, what can you do? Remember what you said? Yeah. You go back and you remember it in your brain. And as far as your brain is concerned, it doesn't know the difference between you just read that on a piece of paper or you remembered it or you made it up. But I didn't say that at all. I was talking about five guys. You thought I said Burger King. And it turns out that even our memories of things, when we remember them, we have the ability to change them. So one of the uh, therapies they're doing now with people that have PTSD or they've had very scary things happen in their life, is they're saying to them, okay, remember it, but remember it just a little bit different, and a little bit different, and a little bit different, and a little bit different. And over a period of time, what you remember isn't what actually happened, because you're turning it down to the scariest part. It's not as scary. And um, they have a little pill now that people can take. And uh, you take this pill, and uh, what it does is it brings back these bad memories but in a way that you're not in a bad environment, so they're not as scary as they were when you first remembered them. But your brain doesn't know which one is actually real. So it takes the newest version as real. So what that comes down to meaning is if you tell your brain something, it's going to do it if it can. You, know, you can't say, OK, I want to walk through the wall, because the laws of physics, you can't walk through walls, right? But if you say to your brain, I'm a loser, I can't do this, what do you think your brain is going to say? Yes, you can. No. Nope. Oh, that's why you can't. It's going to say, OK. So at where I teach right now during the day, before here, where I teach right now, we have one guy who says, it takes me five times to learn things. I said, no, it doesn't. It only takes five times because you tell yourself it's going to take five times. You don't even try to remember the first four. But I said, but I can assure you, if I put a gun at your head oh, okay. and told you, remember what I'm going to tell you, you'd remember. 
you would, and he said, you're right. <clears throat> so what he has to do is break the habit of saying negative things to himself, like I can't do this. I can't learn something the first time. Because all his brain is saying, if you say to your brain, I can't do this, what's your brain gonna say? Okay. Okay. I don't need to remember it. <clears throat> if you say I need to remember it, <clears throat> it does. So do you remember the first time you got burned on the yeah. stove? How old were you? I was like five. Okay. How many other things do you remember from when you were five? Um, I fell on my knee. Okay. Um, I learned I rode my bike by myself. Mm -hmm. I learned how to tie my shoes. I was questioned twice for junior since because it already knew I was I don't know if it's on a dosage or what, but it, I'm I'm just saying, like, um I was tested twice for that and I was put in the third grade and I was five years old. I remember sitting around a lot of people in white coats and uh -huh. having a finger on my head, you know, and they were talking to me, like asking me questions okay. on a computer. But okay. it was a big computer. Okay, so you seem to remember a lot compared to most people. I have a photographic memory, but I can't remember your name. Okay. Like, I'll see you and be like, hey! Uh, okay, well see, that's because you told your brain I can't do it. Oh, okay. I, I never told myself I can't. No, I just you just said it. Time. You said, I can't remember your name. I remember that kid did the best. <laughs> And what is your brain saying? Yeah, you can. It's saying, okay. Oh, duh. And you can remember stuff you read yeah. because you said what? I have a photographic memory. So what does your brain <laughs> say? Okay. Okay. So the ultimate takeaway is whatever you say to your brain, it's going to do. Like when you said brain, on the proficiency, there's a story in the reading and it's referring to brain. When you said brain, that's where my head went. I was like, oh, I didn't see it. So that's how I picture it. Okay. Anyway, yeah. So that's how our brain works. Yeah. So the key thing for employment is you need to be somebody who is positive. Not, don't go in, I'm never going to get there, won't hire me. Because what's going to happen? Did I ever say Your it? brain is going to do things so they won't hire you. <laughs> if you go and say, I always screw up at the last second, Guess what your brain is going to do? Screw up at the last second. It's going to make sure you do that because it doesn't. Don't it, forget to mess up. It does what you tell it to do. Okay. There's not this other this this part of you that's your brain that's separate from you. It's just 80 billion neurons. 16 billion of them are in your cerebral cortex, and that's where your memories are stored. They don't know who you are. They don't care who you are. They just do what they do. If you tell them to do something, they're not going to say, no, I'm not going to do it. They're just going to do it because that's what they're programmed to do. So if you want to get in the medical field, you don't say, well, I haven't started yet. I have. Well, you like, started today no, by I saying you haven't started. No, I mean, I haven't started it. You know what I'm saying? But being in this program right now, it's like. Okay, well, so you can't say it as a future thing. You need to say what you just said. I have started. And you need to think about what it is in the medical field that you want to do. That's not me. Not okay, what is it you want to I do? I want to be a physical therapist. Oh, physical therapist. So I consider that sort of in the medical field, too. Okay. But um, that's what you need to do. And you're going to go in the military and then what? Go to college. Oh, um, college. Okay. So you need to you have, have your brain processing on that. If you read books about pharmacology, your brain doesn't know the difference between it's real and not real. Your brain does not know. So you're saying read more? Like read, imagine, do anything having to do with, with pharmacology, and you're going to be learning because your brain, you told your brain, this is what I'd like to do, this is what I want to do, and it's just going to do it. Okay, you can't really violate the laws of science. But if, so for example, people that play the piano, if when they're in bed at night or they're on the train or they're in the car and they just think about playing the piano and they picture themselves playing the piano, guess what their brain does? It thinks they're playing the piano because it doesn't know the difference. It's just these so our brains are dumb. Well, in the sense they're just 
16 billion cells that do things. They have a structure that they can do things. One example would be um, you have, uh, have you ever been in a place where you're talking to somebody and somebody says your name and you hear it? Mm -hmm. And you don't hear anybody else's name? Yeah. Because part of your brain, some of these neurons, are just out there looking, waiting, you know, just always, did she say my name? Did she say Ebony? Ebony, Ebony. Somebody, if they hear Ebony, up what? Who called them? <laughs> or it's like if you go into a, uh, a school cafeteria. Man, I used to hate that. And you <laughs> say, Mom. Oh, they're every, crazy. every mother looks, oh. right? Because you said Mom. Right. And she identifies as Mom. If you went in there and said Betty, and all these women are in there talking, and you say Betty. Everybody's going to look, but they're going to No, see. everybody won't. Most people won't even hear the word Betty. Most people will not even hear the word Betty. But if you say mom, most people will. Yeah. If you have men and women in there and everybody's talking and somebody says mom, the men are not going to, huh, what? They're not going to do that. No. Okay? okay? So part of our brain is always doing stuff in the background. I used to always wonder that because I'd get a deep conversation with my mom when I was in trouble or something. Mm -hmm. And I'd be outside, like running in the house, and I'd be looking, and I'd hear Ebony, and I'd look. Right. I'm talking to you. And I'd be like, so mom, so is this? No, they didn't. Okay. I heard, but I swear I heard somebody say my name. So, he having an advantage over other people is to understand how powerful our brains are. Okay, that's it. So you're saying read, imagine, think, and, and if I picture myself going to school in the military, if I picture all that, then my body is going to process and believe what I can read? Your brain is, first I mean, of all, starting with your brain, 